Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I want to discuss um, the random fault issue that a lot of guys experience, whether it be with the UC100, uh, the G540, or virtually any uh, stepper driver. It really doesn't matter whether it's a stepper driver, servo driver. Um, and usually what the problem ends up being, or where you guys should troubleshoot first, is your cables. You want to make sure that every cable you're using on your machine is shielded. Now that being said, I've done a video on explaining the importance of shielded cable and I wanted to reiterate the importance of shielded cable because a lot of guys think that because they're buying uh, shielded cable that they automatically are protected from EMI because the shielding is there. Well, guys, that's just not the case. You have to understand that the shielded cable is a tool. The shielding is an actual tool. And you have to use every tool properly to get the end result you're looking for. And that being said, I decided to comb YouTube like you do and try to find a video that is short and sweet and to the point and really reflects just how sensitive cables are to noise. I get a lot of guys that are telling me, you know, they're using shielded cable, they've, they've grounded everything properly, but they're still getting that ghost in the machine type effect. Now, when you describe to me you're having a random problem of sorts, it makes it virtually impossible for me to pinpoint the problem because I'm not there with you. Again, I can only do so much and I always can go by the exact details you provide me. That being said, that's why I tell you guys, I want you to document in explicit detail whatever your machine is doing when you encounter these problems. If you have access to a video camera, shoot a video of the problem, shoot it to me. Because that makes things so much easier on whoever's trying to actually support you as far as what's actually going on with the machine. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, I also wanted you, know, you guys to understand how important it is to document and really record every type of trial and error solution you, you implement. Remember, with our machines, we are our own mechanics. They're real, typically, unless you're in a factory, there isn't a technician there to work on them. So again, it's how well you're able to decipher what that machine is telling you, because every problem with this equipment is telling you something. It's how well you're able to decipher and become the CNC whisperer, so to speak, to figure it out. And nine out of 10 times, I can tell you right now, nine out of 10 times, and I will prove exactly what I'm saying, even with this message I received the other day. This was a client of mine, his name was Dan. Um, he was having problems with his UC100. He responded back. I told him, you know, it's probably a shielding issue. Once again, he responded back. I wrapped the cable in aluminum foil and haven't had it ever since. I will get a better cable. Thanks for pointing me in the right direction. Guys, this is very, very real. OK, and like I said, the noise that I'm talking about, it affects everything, whether it's a UC100, whether it's, you know, your motor cables, whether it's the machine itself. The spindle is one of the biggest culprits because it produces so many amps. And again, uh, you're dealing with so many volts. You got to take it serious because, again, your data signals that are going back into the board for your driver, if any of those are wonky or you have that as well with your breakout board whether it be with the G540 because the G540 itself has an integrated breakout board you'll notice these random issues coming up now I'm not saying it's a hundred percent fix all the time there are incidents where again it's how well you document to really pinpoint the problems but I can tell you this right now n at least 90 percent of all random faults are generated from noise. EMI noise is the biggest culprit. And this video, once again, I found it. It's short and sweet. and I'm going to cover exactly just an overview of what he's actually talking about. He's got an extension cord here and it's running power right near a shielded cable. And he's going to show you how many volts of noise that it, again, it's just an extension cord and just how many volts of noise is actually being produced and picked up through the, through the shielded cable he has lying beside it. Here's a demonstration using a extension cord all right plugged in to a common voltage from the wall uh -huh. and we're also using a two wire shielded cable okay with this we have it connected to our fluke voltmeter currently we're showing single ended voltage here at uh, three and a half volts ac that's between one of those 
conductors and earth ground. And earth ground. Over That's here. a lot of noise voltage. How are we going to make that noise voltage go away? In order to reduce this as much as we can, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is take and show that uh, we have ground here. Uh -huh. And we're going to take the other end of our alligator clips and connect it to the shield of our cable. Okay. That's okay, guys. The reason I stopped the video is because I really want to pinpoint what he just did right here. You can see he attached a red alligator clip to the shielding. Well, every bit of shielded cable comes inclusive with a, a shield drain. And you can see this wire, <clears throat> excuse me, once again that is the actual shield drain from this uh, two conductor shielded cable. This shield drain is what you terminate and would connect to the ground like he just did here. He should, once again, he could have connected this, this alligator clip right here to the drain and he would have got the same effect, okay, of what you're going to see in the video. But when I tell you guys to actually terminate your shielded drain, this is the drain, and this needs to go to an earth ground in order for this cable to function as it should. You cannot just use, once again, a shielded cable and expect that the shield will work without connecting the drain properly. And again, I'm telling you, that is why when you see shielded cables being used and they're being used in a commercial environment when you're talking about fabrication and building cables, why it is so expensive. Because you are talking about a lot of soldering. You're, you're talking about a lot of uh, terminalizing each drain, again, for both ends. So, again, if you've looked at some of the stuff that I offer where I'm like my, my uh, pro home switches, where you see that I actually terminate the drain for you, put it on the clip, uh, again, for the mounting bracket, you know when you mount that to your chassis, as long as your chassis is grounded, it's going to ground out on your chassis from the earth ground. That is the same principle as this here. As long as you guys are terminating this drain as you should be, and again, connecting it to an earth ground, you'll be set. But once again, and I'm reinstating it, I know you guys are, maybe some of you that already know this are sick of hearing it, you must, there is no way around it. You must terminate the drain wire, just solder on either a circle clip or you can extend it with a wire. You, you're more than welcome to do that. A lot of guys will say, well, you know, it's not that long. Well, of course, you can solder it on, you know, another lead of 20 gauge and just terminate it with a circle clip. Um, again, I, I love the circle clips because you can screw them in to wherever you're trying to attach it to your earth ground and you're set to go. I've had some questions about driving a stake in the ground to create your own earth ground. You can do that as well. OK, commercial environments allow for different, you know, optimizations for grounding, whichever would want to actually suit you. If you're in your own home and you're in an area that, you know, has a wall outlet, which every home or typical shop will have, the third prong on your wall outlet is the easiest way to earth ground. It's a dead on known way that passes every code in the country as far as electric uh, or electrical goes to actually earth ground with simplicity so keep that in mind and again if you if, when in doubt the third prong on your wall outlet connect that end to your chassis once that's done to your chassis your chassis is then earth grounded which it should be okay once that's done any wire any wire that is shielded should have a termination on one end only and I'm going to play the rest of the video and let you hear exactly why I say one end only. Okay. Well, what okay. that's going to do is bring this back down to a very minimal millivolt voltage. So we didn't move our meter leads at all. We just grounded the shield on that signal wire and it's no longer picking up 3.6 volts worth of noise off that extension cord. It went down just to a, a few uh, 80 millivolts here. Yes. Pretty substantial reduction. So if you had this connected in the field, all wired up like this, then suddenly you lost your ground connection. You're facing a lot of noise yeah. between mm -hmm. those conductors and earth ground, possibly correcting any data that you're going to mm -hmm. receive. Now, there's a reason why we should only ground the signal cable at one location. We should not have the shield grounded at both ends. How come? At both ends, if you get, if which you shouldn't see very often in the field, mm -hmm. if you have connection at both ends of your cable, mm -hmm. you will create what's potentially called earth ground and earth loop, mm -hmm. which will basically return us to this problem here because of the earth conductivity. So you have, actually have a loop 
where current earth ground current can actually pass through the cable. Yes. Which can cause all kinds of noise and other problems too. Very good. Okay, guys. That was literally about as simple as you can get where he discussed the ground loop issue. Ground loops are brought up all the time. If you have an instance have where you actually connect both ends of the cable, okay? So if you connect one end of the cable's drain at, let's say, the end with the chassis, you do not connect it at the end with the actual controller. You will not connect that drain there because when it's connected to the chassis, you have a single ground. That is the earth ground. Once again, if the chassis is, let's say, uh, connected to the third prong on the wall outlet, once again, you do not want to connect it again on the opposite end. You only want one connection. If you do that and connect the both on or connect both ends to both sides, you will definitely conduct a ground loop and you will bring back all the noise that you've actually been trying to fight. So you can see how tedious this process is. It's never really well explained. This is probably the best overall video actually showing noise. Again, he's using a fluke multimeter, one of the best names in the industry, and it reflects exactly how critical just something as silly as an extension cord. And I, I get guys telling me all the time, you know, they're running, you know, uh, a 48 volt spindle or, you know, even the, the, the standard 220 volt 2.2 K spindles. If this is just a 120 volt extension cord, imagine what kind of noise you're generating with a 2.2 K spindle. Okay, you're running 220 volt, typical amp draws about 10 amps. You're drawing some serious, serious power and you're making some serious noise. So again, there's a reason I sell 16 gauge, 600 volt rated, insulated, double shielded. That means braid shielding and actual mylar shielding cable for spindles. Okay, I'm the only one that does it because I realize the noise that it's creating. <clears throat> and again, you guys uh, are the ones that suffer when you don't take heeds of this advice because your machine that you've worked hours, months, possibly years on will suffer from from these culprits, these ghost in the machine effects. And it really is ghost in the machine effect. If you guys ever watch that those shows, Ghost Hunters, where they're using EMF meters, I mean, it's pretty amazing how we call it ghost in the machine, but that's exactly what it is. You know, you're, you can't see these frequencies. They're playing havoc on your system. They make all kinds of weird things happen. Um, and again, really pay attention to it because when I discuss stability of a system and I've discussed this numerous times, you get your system up and running. To me, a system is not stable until it's stable for at least two weeks, two weeks of solid use. And you know, your system typically will have, you know, at least maybe five to six runs, even if you're tramming the machine, you know, when I say five or six runs, I'm talking full projects, you will start then generating that stable factor where you know, okay, I know my machine is capable of this. We ran this before and everything is good. Do not be afraid of documenting how long your machine has been stable. And the reason I say that, if you do encounter a problem, you can eliminate the obvious. If you've never had a problem with a switch, uh, a switch triggering itself, and you do see that all of a sudden, after two months of operation, you get that happening, you have to start looking back at past variables as to how this happened. That's why becoming a detective with your machine is imperative. I don't care who makes your machine. I don't care if you designed it. I don't care if you bought plans. Whatever it may be, once again, it is what it is. And I don't care if you buy a controller from me. If you buy a controller from me, I've built the electronics. When you connect it to the machine is the final product because you're not using a controller by itself. You're going to hook it to your chassis. If it's a metal substrate chassis, you can rest assured it's, it's damn near an antenna. So, again, taking the heed, do everything correct. That's why all of my packages include shielded cable for that reason because it's imperative that you pay close attention to what you're doing. And again, any any item, especially an accessory that's drawing massive power, spindles are number one. Um, motors that are generating high voltage, if you're in that 72 volt category, I personally like shielding on every motor cable, especially as it enters the chassis. Um, the G540 is the exception because the chassis itself is grounded from the actual plug and utilizing shielded cables with the DB9 you're, you're good that way. If you're doing G251X drivers or another driver system where you're using a breakout board, you better make sure you damn near ground 
uh, all of those EMI signals utilizing shield and cable when it comes into the chassis. And if you look at all my builds, that's what I do. I choose the chassis electrical end of the chassis to ground out all of my signals. Now, I do that because if you go on the opposite end where your, where your CNC chassis is, it would be kind of difficult to actually put a ground on each corner where it's much easier to do inside the controller itself and, and you're fine as long as you're dissipating the signals properly. So please, once again, Think about what I'm saying. I'm, I'm hoping I help someone out there who needs help. That's my overall goal and to keep you guys on the straight and narrow as far as setting your machine up. Um, once again, my name is Vince at eDealers Direct. I plan on doing more videos, of course. And if you guys do have questions, please don't be afraid to uh, message me. This is a question that's come up numerous times about these random faults. If you go on forums, I'm not a big forum fan, but if you go on forums, you're going to find that there's numerous posts on oh random faults and random this and this is doing this randomly what it really is telling you is how well you've built your system and how well you truly understand the electronic part of the system you're building because guys I'm gonna tell you right now and you're gonna find this out really quick if you use Google the internet and and in general the mechanical aspect of your machine seems to be a very easy aspect to cover you see chassis all over the place there's a reason you don't see a lot of good electrical knowledge all over the place and that is because there's so many variables involved but there are only so many variables when it comes to setting up a machine that like i said if it's a metal based substrate chassis is virtually an antenna for, for all kinds of noise so again keep in mind what you just saw it it's it broke everything down perfectly. Just just use what you just saw in those principles for your machine and, and what you've watched, listened, and learned, and I guarantee you, you'll be on the road to, to success with your system. Once again, my name is Vince. E-Dealers Direct uh, is my eBay store. Uh, you can message me if, you, if required at storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313 at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all. Take care.